Hi class, this is uh, part two. We're going to get stuck in a bit more detail into the TCB model and just see what it's about. You realise, don't panic. It's not that difficult to understand. Okay, now look, let's have a look at um, what this chapter is trying to do. Is It's a comprehensive approach to um, accomplish brand positioning. Now, there are three models in sequence. We're going to use two. You've got the TCB positioning model and the middle model, the IDU benefit model. Now look, let's just have a look at it and see what the idea is. Right, we're just trying to figure out, okay, how does this fit in someone's mind? What's the interpretation? And what benefits fundamentally that the brand has that gets it to have a position of value in someone's mind? It's that simple. So you don't get too excited about TCB, you know, what is a target category benefit? Uh, what was IDU? I'm, I mean, I, I don't even remember off the top of my head. We're going to get to it. Right, it is just, to me, the, the terminology is nice, but what it does, understanding that, is the important part here. Now, look, even here, brand architecture and positioning. Right, they're just trying to show that there are different levels of a brand. Your parent brand, Corporate brand, master brand, you've got a sub-brand. I mean, this is just basic branding that you did in Mark 101. Now, here with the TCB model, I mean, guys, is it that hard? Target customer, really? Every single marketing model or problem has a target customer. Category, um, all right, the C factor. Category, well, okay, what is it, yeah? And then what's the key benefit? And this is the one, look, target customer, Key benefit, they're the ones that really get me excited because that's the fundamentals of marketing. Now, what this book does do really well, you need to read when I've got it highlighted in brand positioning uh, research, um, and this directly applies to your assignment. The most useful types of research for brand positioning, situation audit, um, conduct or commission electronic search of the main brand's marketing strategies and their ads. Guys, it's your assignment your individual brand, and for your marketing plan. Know what is out there. So it's plentiful in Forbes, Business Week, Advertising Age. This is what I'm trying to tell you, that it's the easiest stuff to do. I was going to use another word. You reverse engineer it. Every time I look at a an ad or what have you, I'm just running through this going, that's the appeal, that's the target market, that's what they're doing. We are detectives, we pull apart the ads, we reverse engineer it, and we know immediately how our competitors are setting up the brand in the minds of our target customers. This is easy, but you've just got to understand how it's done, right? You just, a lot of people just look at the ads, and for many people, they just um, try to delete them, they have ad blocker. Um, if they're on Netflix, they haven't seen an advertisement in 20 years or whatever. Okay, so guys, all we're trying to do is figure out how people think of their brand. You look at it here. You have a brand identifier. Okay, um, yeah, what is it? You've got a category, a target, and a key benefit. Who's it for? Brand category, what is it? Is it a potato? Is it a car? What the, f what is it, right? Key benefit. Guys, that's all we really need to understand the TCB model. Okay. They get very excited about stakeholders um, showing us who is also interested in the brand. Okay, that's nice. What I like are target audience options within stakeholder groups. Brand loyals. How on earth do you get a tragic, diehard Nike fan to go, yeah, I want to try something else? Favorable brand switches. People that will go from one category to another going, yeah, yeah, I've got good views on it, others, new category. We're looking at these are people in the marketplace with dollars in their hand. How do we get some of these guys to come over and when it gets to the final decision or to click on the cart and say, I want that to pick ours. That's as simple as it is, guys. All right, the campaign target we get. And here, uh, yeah, consideration set. So it's a matter of, how do you go through it? What kind of cards? Um, yeah, are they European, American, Japanese, whatever? Small. And you just bring it down, and then you go to which actually brands do I like? 
This isn't hard stuff to do. Um, now, you've got here customer research to find out the consideration set. Guys, I got my students say, look, you need to buy a pair of casual shoes to go with your jeans. Give me three brands. Uh, and it's, you know, Converse Vans, whatever, right? Okay, um, why are you going to pick one over the other? Oh, it depends which one's on special. That tells you they're all viewed exactly the same. Um, and depending on price is the most important thing for students. That'll trigger a sale. Or it'll be, you could have a, a lunatic like me that goes, if this is for clothing, the only brand I'll consider is Adidas. Or is it? Um, if I can't find Adidas at the price I want, I'll look at Puma and I bought some Mizuno golf shirts. Uh, but I really tried hard to find the Adidas ones at the right price. And the funny thing is, after I bought some Mizuno shirts, Adidas, uh, I found some a reduced price and bought them as well. So, yes, guys, I apologise. I have a lot of golf shirts. Um, so, look, again, these terms, present versus intended category, are, are just trying to get you to think, who are we trying to grab? What branding? Where do we want to put the, the brand and all of the Marcoms to get the most dollars out of? So we're trying to expand the category, get more people dying it or into a different category, a narrower one. Sometimes you say, no, we just want to focus on this particular group of buyers because they're highly profitable. Um, we get a good return for our advertising spend. We don't have a lot of competition there. So that's, that's it. It's simple. Now, the benefit positioning decision. All right, this you need to read in detail, okay? Central benefit, differentiated, central me too positioning. And this is where it gets very theoretical. Key benefit type. The, the book does delve right into the psychology of our mind story on classic advertising research. Uh, yes, I'd like you to try and apply this to your um, assignments because it gets you to focus on the fundamentals. We've chosen this book for a reason. This is it. This chapter is the, the heart of the book to sit there and say, really, can I, are my decisions based on emotions? Are they instinctual, archetypal? Has it been something that's just been drilled into me for generations? Rational. Um, understanding this really matters. And see, this is the, the beauty of it. You've got your brand positioning, central, differentiated, me too. What I would do is try to get some ads and put them here and identify. This is a key diagram. I expect to see this in the appendices of your assignment and in your group marketing plans because you can say, well, the ads that are out there in our situation audit have these elements. Now, have a look at it. Central versus differentiated versus central me too positioning. Now, this is the key thing. Right, three options of benefit positioning. Central, the market leader can adopt the central positioning. In other words, I'm the best of its kind. Right, Coke is it, right? The real thing, Cadbury is chocolate was my favorite. I love Cadbury chocolate, right? Pretty much going, F you everyone else, we're the real deal, you're all pretenders. Gillette, um, the best a man can get. Again, it's hilarious. Uh, Mercedes slogan, the best or nothing. Recent ones, you have Mercedes, the ultimate driving machine. Now, a differentiated positioning is that you try to be a bit different. Okay. Um, yeah, what was here? They have Uncola, Think Different campaign. You want to move away. Uh, Aldi at the moment is good different. It's a classic. We're good, but we're different. Their advertising has been absolutely crazy in Australia. I'll actually uh, try to show some of their ads. Um, so this is one of the key things. Now, central me too positioning is where what you're saying is, and this is in the retail zone, when you have home brands and select um, store brands that go, hey, we're the same quality as these others, but we're cheaper. And uh, Aldi actually does that with a lot of their products. All right, now, we've looked at that. Now, guys, look, the second stage of position, the IDU model, right? What are we looking at? Key benefits, entry ticket benefits, or inferior delivered benefits. Look, guys, I, I haven't used the term entry ticket benefits uh, forever. 
most of the conversations you're going to hear online in any other source is about the key benefit. Um, and this is the interesting, this is a great line you have to pay attention to. It. The key benefit is a benefit to be emphasized and it may be of the instinctual, archetypal, emotional, or rational type. And this is where what he's looking at is um, brain level theory, right? And what they're trying to do is um, understand how you think. And he's got a valid point. Customers make a perceptually faster that when you guys, the amount of time a consumer will just flick an image on their phone, it's gone, um, have milliseconds whether to accept or reject an advertisement by just moving along or actually looking at it. So what you have here is some of the, the, the key approaches theoretically that they're trying to do. Now, there is no way on earth I'm going to ask a specific question on the brain region, but you have a look at it. Emotions, right? That He's just trying to show here that this is just part of who we are, our makeup. And uh, yeah, you have the selling proposition, key benefit claim, and what level does it work? instinct right you've got it here you've got rational um look guys these are really nice um in terms of understanding how we as humans think and this is i think what what they're trying to do is make sense of the gray matter in our heads i think it just highlights the fact that we process so quickly and differently depending on our age our predisposition to brands that a lot of this stuff, yeah, you got sex appeals, curiosity, all of these things show in terms of the appeals we use in developing our advertisements. Um, and that's what's interesting, trying to match up what works, which of these emotions, instincts, judgment, reasoning, depending on what we're trying to sell, works, or what combinations of those work. Right, so what have we got? Archetypal selling proposition. Again, they're just trying to show how much we actually think about it, depending on the category, uh, schemas. You're talking Jung as one of the fathers of psychology. Um, yeah, what do we got? Richard Branson, um, his approach. Um, when you hear the brand Virgin, oh, you always think it's cheaper, it's lower, it's fun, right? These are just things that have happened over years with the sheer volume of money pumped into getting you to recognise just instantly that top ad. And it's one of those things that you'd be watching television and go, oh, that ad looks like it's this company's ad. Just immediately happens. I like emotional selling propositions. Yeah, what do we got? Ecstasy, delight, pity, empathy. Guys, these are just all the appeals and effects that we can use. Again, this is really advanced um, advertising design, which as a Marcom subject, we don't really need. It's good to understand it's here, but yeah, with digital um, feedback coming as to what appeals work, what don't, yeah, a lot of it you can figure out through the historical analysis of what ads have worked and what haven't. Okay, rational selling proposition. Go to Harvard. It's the best uni in the world. Um, you have a Harvard degree, you will get employment. That's rational. Don't know if there's that much emotional there going, oh, I love Harvard. It might be in the United States. Not so much for us. So, guys, look, that is pretty much, we go back here. That's the good old, what have we got? The T, <laughs> TCB model of um, branding, really. What are we looking at? Target market, category, key benefit, and what are the emotional, rational, purely instinctive factors that when we see a, a communication coming from a company helps us interpret it in a way that will uh, we'll view favourably the brand. That is fundamentally what we're looking at, guys. Um, it's not hard. 